Today's video is on how to get more performance out of your brokerage account using QYLD, but in a different way than most people use QYLD. I'll show you the way I use QYLD that helps me earn over 100,000 per year in dividends at my channel. We're also at point three for the day, which yes, is a couple thousand dollars, but we don't worry about that at this channel. We only worry about the market index. Is point three we're up today, and the indexes were down 0.2, the NASDAQ was down 0.18, and the Dow was down 0.38. Also, on a, that was on a um, daily basis. On a year-to-date basis, you'll see that we're up 39% now for the year, 39%. Uh, the Dow's up 3, the SP's up 16, and the NASDAQ's up 32%. <clears throat> so we're beating all the indexes on both a daily basis and on a year-to-date basis. And we're doing that with margin, of course. That's one of the major themes of my channel is margin. And now that you guys are getting more familiar with my margin strategies, I'm going to share with you how I use options. And that the last few videos I've been discussing tricks with options on how to lower your margin with options. And today I'm going to show you another trick with QYLD. So we get our performance, again, from margin. For every $1 you put in your account, you get $4 of purchasing power. That's four. That's eight hundred thousand dollars of purchasing power right there. Okay, guys. I mean, on a four hundred thousand dollar account, I would have one point six million for purchasing power. But uh, I have many things invested right now, so my purchasing power is down to eight hundred thousand because you only want to use a fraction of this number to get ahead. So I use margin to get ahead, and it doesn't show up on a credit check. Margin helps you live financially free because you have to use loans, in my opinion, to get ahead. Otherwise, life is really tough. So I use margin to get ahead. I, I tie my investments to the indexes to get ahead. That way, when I'm using margin, I'm getting double the performance of the indexes because, well, I'm tied to the indexes. And QYLD is an index play. It's a technology play that tracks the NASDAQ. So QYLD is one of my favorite go-to funds to not only get my income, but to get some performance. But if you guys are familiar with QYLD, you know that that thing does not perform well. If you go to a Morningstar test, you'll see that, and I've showed you on past videos, uh, on a Morningstar test, QYLD does not, does not meet the, the, you know, the criteria that I need to get ahead in life. QYLD, you'll see that, um, yes, it's a NASDAQ 100 cover call ETF three-star fund. But look, it, QLD is the blue hash mark, and it underperformed the indexes. It only made 20000 in the last 10 years. The index has made 30000 And Cornerstone, my, my fund that I'm in, Cornerstone, I'll just show you here briefly, which tracks the NASDAQ. CRF tracks the NASDAQ as well. Cornerstone total return fund. It's five stars, okay? Five-star fund, okay? And it had and it beat all the indexes. It you see CRF the blue hash mark here, the blue the blue line on this chart represents Cornerstone of fifty thousand. So it beat all the indexes. So I always have to say where I get my performance from because if you go on Reddit or if you go to other channels, you'll you'll hear them trash Cornerstone and also trash Margin. I've been using Margin for over five years now, and I've been investing for 20 years, and I've never had one problem with Margin except during Corona, which I was tied not to the index as I was tied to real estate and energy. So here we get our performance from Cornerstone as well, okay? So I have to share this with you guys because, I mean, first of all, Cornerstone's amazing, and it is the cornerstone of my portfolio. That's why I have 400000 in it, and it is tech like QYLD. And this is not what we're going to this is not even the point of the video. I'm just sharing it with you where I get my performance from because performance equals more equity. More equity means financial freedom to live freely out of your brokerage account and travel and do whatever you want with your money. Uh, this this available withdrawal number is my equity number. 400,000 is my account. 173 is my equity number. That means if it gets to zero I'm in a margin call. So I want more performance. I want more days gains because that adds directly to my bottom line and to my equity, which then gives me four times more purchasing power. So you want equity so that you can swipe your e-trade card. I, I swipe this checking and, and, and credit card out of e, uh, with e-trade. I swipe out of this account and do whatever I want, buy a house, a car, food, travel. So, But the key is keeping this number high, this available draw number high. And so Cornerstone is a is a it has it has low maintenance thirty percent maintenance and that's how I'm keeping my equity so high. I have four hundred grand in it. I have two hundred grand of margin as you can see down here below two hundred and forty grand of margin, 
and yet I'm still I still have lots of cushion. Why is that? Because people who know who who have bought my e guides, uh, who understand margin, uh, maintenance is everything to living financially free. So Cornerstone's thirty percent maintenance, and that's why I'm able to put so much in it. If I put a thousand in Cornerstone, only three hundred of my equity is taken up. If you put a thousand in USOI then $1,000 is taken up. If you put 1,000 in some of these yield max funds and, and you're not in E-Trade, you could have uh, all your maintenance, uh, you could have all your equity taken up there, so beware. Cornerstone, by the way, the other benefit of it, the reason why it outperforms the indexes, I have to tell you, before we get to QYLD, I have to tell you about this because people will detract from Cornerstone. They will say, look at the chart on Portfolio Visualizer, it goes down. It just goes into the ground, I know, but look at the drip, okay? Last price, okay? The market price here is, and this is how it outperforms on a on a total basis on, on Morningstar, right? This is how it outperformed. So $8 is the market price, and down here is the drip price. For all the new people watching my video today who are coming to the channel today, look, 660 is the is the, the NAV price, 6633, okay? It reinvests the, the dividends at this NAV price, and it compounds your 21% dividend that you get in Cornerstone at this NAV every month. So 660, 23% gain. Uh, 633, 28% gain. Uh, 642, 26% gain. All these $6 lots are the NAV price, which Cornerstone drips its dividend at every month. And a lot of my subscribers and people who have purchased my e-guides are now, you know, the comments are rolling in now on my text messages and on Discord the server, the chat room, which everyone uh, who buys my e-guides gets access to my uh, my Discord chat room. Uh, they're all getting their dividends now. They're really happy with it. I'm glad you guys are, are are getting your dividends, your drip shares of Cornerstone. I'm glad. I'm glad this is working out for you. Some of you guys are showing your day's gains, and they're pretty powerful. I mean, you guys are making a lot of money. You know, same amount, the same kind of numbers as me. So it's just fabulous to watch that in the Discord channel. All of your guys' comments, uh, all of the information you're providing on who else does discounted drips and things like that. I'm just really enjoying the Discord uh, conversation there. Uh, so please keep that coming. Now we're going to get to QYLD and we're actually over a hundred members strong now on Discord. And I wanted to say some of those are people that I recruited from Seeking Alpha, top talent in my opinion, to make our conversations on Discord better. Okay. So some of the people in that chat room and Discord, they're going to be really helpful to you. I don't want to just say their names yet because I don't want to name drop, but you will be getting lots of good information from some of these guys should you have any questions. Okay. So uh, that's good for Discord. Um, so anyway, going down to QYLD, the point of this video, okay? QYLD, here we go, all right? I had 20,000 of QYLD at one point because it has a 12% dividend. Why wouldn't I want QYLD? A lot of people love it, it's a popular fund. It used to be a four-star fund even, but now it's three stars. Okay, my problem with QYLD is that I can find higher yield elsewhere. I just showed you Cornerstone. Cornerstone has a 21% yield. You just have to learn how to play it. It has, it has a rights offering every year, and that's why it drops and looks so bad on the chart. But if you just sell before the rights offering, which uh, I can do and anyone can do, all you have to do is wait for the the news announcement from Cornerstone, sell before the rights offering, buy it back after. And my Discord chat room alerts you of that. When the, when the rights offering occurs in Cornerstone, I will alert you on Discord, and many other people on Discord will, will be able to help you out with how the rights offering process works. So I choose CRF over QYLD, that's the only difference is you have to sell before the rights offering and you get a 21% yield. So why wouldn't I choose CRF over QYLD? So what I did, guys, here's the trick. Are you ready? Without further ado, okay? People say, why am I selling options on QYLD? The options aren't good. Well, okay, 370, that's almost $400. Seven times four is $2,800. So I lowered my margin selling options on QYLD by $2,800 roughly, and I lowered my cost position. Look, QYLD, $20 strike price, right? $20 strike price. Okay, now we have a, a 370 premium, okay? So what you do is you just round, just for math's sake, let's just round 370 to four. So you just do 20 minus four, and you get 16. So 16 and then add back that 30 cents. So 1630 is my cost basis, okay? Now let's go look at QYLD. Let's let's see the true price for QYLD. The true price for QYLD here is 1779. So I'm getting in at 1630, 
which is a really good price. It's, it's lower than the market price, and I'm not taking up 20K of margin. See, I had 20K in QLD, like I said, before I found out about Cornerstone, of course, CRF and CLM. I had all my money in, in QLD and some of these other funds, but they just didn't cut it. They didn't beat the, the, the indexes on a, on a Morningstar test, and they're just sucking up all my margin and not really paying me much interest to cover that margin 12 percent on the dividend plus your and when you have a most people have about a 10 percent margin rate mine's five because i negotiated mine down please don't ask but still even 12 percent and i'm making i'm earning 12 and i'm and I have, i'm charged five percent interest that i'm only netting seven percent on qyld and it just goes sideways so that just wasn't uh, that that was not good enough for me. Okay, so what I did was I dumped the 20k QYLD. Okay, and then I sold a put on QYLD, uh, a bunch of puts, seven puts, seven contracts here to get another, you know, two to three thousand dollars. Okay, so I knocked my margin down another two to three thousand on top of that twenty thousand. I lowered my cost basis, so I lowered my risk. It's better than people who own QYLD outright in the market now. And then I still get exposure, okay? QYLD, when, when tech is up in a given day, QYLD still goes up for me slightly. These puts still move for you, okay? They move smaller because they're longer term, but when you add up this column of puts, it'll give you another, usually on a big up day, another $1,000 for me. So you wonder, how, I, how do I get my thousands per day? I get some from Cornerstone, always Cornerstone, because today was Cornerstone alone. Look, $2,000 in Cornerstone alone today doesn't always do that. Usually it tracks the indexes, but it runs at a 30% average uh, premium to NAV. So that's why it's running up right now when the market's flat because people are sensing a breakout in the market and that's when Cornerstone starts taking off. So Cornerstone, I, I took 20,000 out of QYLD, sold the put on QYLD, raised m even more cash, knocked my margin down by another 3K. And then I just put 10k half the proceeds of qyld 10k into cornerstone because cornerstone's a 21 percent dividend so i sold 20k qyld bought 10k crf you see and i lowered my margin by 13k because i lowered it by 10 in qyld and then sold the options on qyld and i'm at a better cost basis and look the the yield of uh let's say 400 dollars right on on 20 a strike price so what's 10 percent on 20 strike price that's 200 10 percent on 20 is 200 okay two thousand dollars you do 20 times 100 100 shares that's a contract so that's two thousand dollars now what's 10 percent on two thousand that would be 200 but i received 400 dollars, so that's almost 20 percent uh so we're, we're at around like 15 or 16 okay so i'm i'm actually getting a, a better yield than the yield itself on on qld yes you have to factor in the next two years okay i'm in it for two years so um uh, you know, if you amortize that, or if you if you annualize that on a year yearly basis, divide it in the last, in the next two years, and you're at somewhere like around eight or nine percent. But the, that's not really the problem. You know, you shouldn't worry about how you can get a bigger dividend on QYLD because you you don't outperform the indexes that way, and you just suck up a lot of equity. So I'd rather just not have it. I still have some exposure to QYLD. Okay. Uh, this 200 that you see that I'm down, I'm not even down on that. You know, I'm up in my cost basis. I showed you that my cost basis is around 16. The, these li options are not liquid. So they're going to sometimes show these, uh, inconsistencies, but if you just hold until assignment, you'll get it at your $16 price or whatever your cost basis is. And so, <clears throat> and then when I get QYLD, I'll probably sell calls on it to get out. But anyway, I'll probably, you know, if I did get a sign on QLD, I would keep some and then I would just dump the other amount and then I would still go buy some Cornerstone or whatever else looks uh, attractive at that time. So I hope you like the trick with QYLD, guys. Why own it outright? The dividend is okay and it didn't outperform the indexes. I'd rather just dump it all, raise a bunch of cash, pay my margin down, sell puts on it, still control it at a lower cost basis, lower my margin even further, and then take half the proceeds and put it into CRF. But you have to learn how to play CRF properly once again. You can't just buy it blindly. You have to... Uh, make sure that you, you know, play the rights offerings properly and ask for the drip. You can't just toggle the drip to get that special drip. You have to call your broker and ask for the special drip. 
So I just don't want anyone telling me why Cornerstone is a terrible fund and, you know, and, and trying to be negative on it when that's how you have to play. You have to play the rights offerings properly. If you need help playing Cornerstone or with using margin to live financially free out of your brokerage account, email me for my e-guides at akintod 48 at gmail.com. Again, when you buy my e-guides, you get not only Discord access, but you get my number too if you buy the bundle. And you can call me anytime. So I talk to my clients all day. Today, I talked to three or four clients all over the world. Can't tell you how much uh, I, I'm enjoying this channel and all the uh, conversations I'm having with some some great people, honestly. And then to the fact that you guys are over in Discord now, we can talk uh, more freely and we can exchange ideas uh, publicly, you know, in front of everyone else's eyes, so we can all learn and benefit from it. It's just great. All right, so I'm really enjoying this, guys. Um, Keep the, the positive comments coming, not only here on YouTube, but on Discord. Keep all that great information flowing. If you have any more questions on this video or on my e-guides, email me again at akintop48 at gmail.com, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.